Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over making a master copy sketch and doing an art analysis assignment. This is going to be a frequent part of our class. I'm going to be having you look at a lot of things from both art history and contemporary art. We'll be making sketches of these different pieces and it's going to be a way of being able to use drawing as a way of understanding something uh, being able to look at a great work of art, break it down into its elements, and sort of understand what the artist was doing there. So I'm going to show you the process. You can get a sense of both how to do it and what this should end up looking like. These sketches don't have to be perfect master copies where you've executed this piece exactly, but I do want to see a time investment. I want to see that you're really looking at the composition, trying to capture that composition, that you're looking at the value structures, the darks and lights and whatever piece, that you're looking at things like the, the mark making and trying to get that yourself. So this shouldn't look rushed or like you haven't spent time on it. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, let's get into the process. All right, so I have our materials laid out for this art analysis master copy sketch assignment. And again, we're going to be looking at Birmingham Totem by Charles White. We'll be doing these assignments throughout this, this semester, so we'll be repeating this same type of process. We're going to use our drawing pads. Okay, so we'll open that up. And we're going to be using our graphite, our pencils. Um, so I'm just going to grab the whole variety of pencils. I'll, you can begin with using your H pencil. Now that's the lightest pencil uh, within our kits and it's the lightest type of lead. Um, so it's great for sketching, sketching things out and it's very easy to erase. And I also have both of our erasers here. So we have our kneaded eraser and our dust-free harder eraser. So this is going to be good for if you really want to get rid of something using your harder eraser, if you want to just knock back the value a little bit, uh, so lighten something up, you can do that with the kneaded eraser. Okay, so let's begin. I've also printed out this image of Birmingham Totem by Charles White. You do not need to print it out. I've just done that uh, for the sake of uh, ease in this video so I can show you how I'm analyzing this as we go. But you can just have that on your screen and uh, be looking at it that way. Or if it's easier for you, you can print it out and, and do that, okay? All right, um, so we're also gonna go over a couple of different uh, drawing skills as we get into this. So I'm gonna start by defining the edges of this picture. And I wanna replicate what I'm seeing in this picture, and it's a long rectangle. Okay, so if I'm analyzing a piece, I'm looking at its composition. I want to try to replicate that composition the best that I can. So I'm going to start by defining the picture plane. It's this kind of longer rectangle. Okay. Longer rectangle, kind of like that. Okay. So about like that. Now this is nice because with these assignments, you're both drawing the piece and you're also taking notes and doing a brief writing assignment. So you can be doing that writing on this page. You can also do that digitally if you want to, or you can include it right on your, your same drawing page, okay? So I'm starting by defining the picture plane. Now again, this is a long rectangle, so I don't want to draw this as a square. It's not drawn within a square, right? You have to replicate the same thing that you're seeing within the piece. Um, now, I'm not going to start by, let's say, going in and trying to draw that hand perfectly. You want to start with big ideas, getting the big compositions down, start with a big general statement, and then work your way up into detail. So I'm first um, going to start sketching in these general shapes in just really a general way. Now I can hold my pencil in a couple of different ways. There's this tripod grip, it's just how you're probably used to holding your pencil, right? Writing like that. You can also hold your pencil like this. 
this is great for getting big general big general shapes down and general lines now something I can also do I'm going to take my photo here for a moment I'm going to show you uh, something I frequently do both when I'm doing a master copy sketch or if I'm drawing from a photograph or drawing from life I'm going to do things like check my angles I'm going to check the angle of what this actually is. Now you can do this in drawing, you check that angle, you can bring that angle right over here and see what that is. And I could even check that angle, bring that angle right over and sketch that out. Check this angle, bring that angle right over, sketch that out. Now that's basically up and down. This checking angles, which is a sighting drawing tool, is really useful because often we look at something, we assume the angle is one way, but when you actually check it, it might be more, um, more severe than you actually think. So it's a way of sort of checking your assumptions. Okay, checking the angle there. Okay, so checking angles, that's one really useful drawing tool. Um, so I'm both paying attention to the subject here, uh, which is this um, young man on top of this, this pile of rubble, and I'm also paying attention to the space behind him and the shape of that space behind him, right? So there's a bit of space on the side here, and I want to get that in this master copy drawing as well. So again, I'm trying to really pay attention to what Charles White was doing here when he was drawing this piece. And hopefully from there, get a better sense of how to get these kind of excellent and powerful compositions uh, for myself. Okay, so I'm getting the big general shapes down. Um, so now I can start to go in and sort of designate where that figure is going to be. You can also, the same way that I was checking angles on these major things, you can do that on a figure, on a person like this. So you could check the angles of the arms, okay? Checking the angles like that, right? And again, you wanna start off I'm starting off with general shapes. So even as I'm drawing something complex like a figure here, I'm thinking what are the simple shapes that I'm seeing? So the head kind of acts like a sphere. We have that chest, which is fairly boxy. Joints kind of acting like spheres. Arms coming out from there. Again, checking the angles of things. Now again, these drawings don't have to be perfect, but I want to see that you're really actively analyzing these works of art, that you're spending time studying the composition. And ultimately, I'm also going to be layering, trying to capture the same values, that, that scale of dark to light that Charles White has here. I'm going to be trying to capture that as well. So I want to see that in your drawings. If there's texture, I want to see you trying to get that texture. Doesn't mean you have to replicate it perfectly. Charles White was a master artist, so you're probably not gonna get there right away, right out of the gate, right? So that's, don't have that expectation of yourself, but spend the time. I can tell when you're spending the time. And when you don't spend the time, I grade you accordingly, trust me. Okay, so again, thinking of these simple shapes, checking the angles of things. Another thing that you can do that is very useful, you can do something called running plumb lines. So when you run a plumb line, that's when you're checking where something lines up, either horizontally or vertically. Okay, so I can do something like I can check the bottom of this hand, where does it line up with the other part of this arm, right? So it's about, I can see, okay, I'm about right there, all right? You can also do something like you can check 
What about the edge of the head? Where does that line up with other things on the body or other things within this composition? And you can see, okay, it's lining up with part of the knee. All right, that's, that's about right. So running lines that go horizontally, running lines that go vertically, that's called running a plumb line, it helps you check where things are lining up. And that can be another area where we make certain assumptions, but then when you check it, you go, oh wow, okay, put this hand way too far down, let me adjust that. So that's a way of checking your drawing, okay? All right, so again, I'm gonna be working from general to specific, getting these general ideas down for this drawing. Okay, so mapping in generally what the planes of the face are doing, then I'll come back in, get more detail in there later. You want to start with general shapes because then if you need to move things around, that's easy to do, right? And it's not a painful process to have to erase a, a small, uh, or erase a shape like this, right? So it's adjustable. Um, but you don't want to get into something super detailed and then realize, oh, I have that in the wrong place, I have to redraw. So you want to work yourself up to detail. Now I'm also realizing maybe I've crunched this down a little bit. Um, there's this, there's more space here, so I can actually just extend my rectangle, my picture plane, maybe up to the top. So you can end up redrawing your um, the edges of your picture. That's fine if you need to. Okay, so I want to give it a little bit more space, maybe even about right there okay all right so I'm gonna switch to a time lapse really quick as I continue getting down the rest of these big general shapes and I'll come back to something in real time as I start to define more of the details and value within here Okay, so I've started to define things a bit more and I'm ready to introduce some value. Now there's a lot of information down in here, down in this, this rubble, right? We don't have to define all of that and I don't expect you to define all of that. Um, but uh, we can define some of these planks and we'll definitely introduce some, some value down in here. I'm gonna start by putting value up into this figure. I'm gonna take my pencil and rather than just doing this, kind of a, a hatching or cross hatching sort of motion, I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna lay this pencil, the whole uh, side of the graphite down and use that whole side to layer in some different planes of value um, quickly and can kind of give me a guide as to uh, where my shadows are, okay? Um, now I'm gonna start by addressing the shadows, getting the general shadow shapes in here. Then I'm gonna work from the darkest end of my shadows uh, gradually up into the light. Okay, so under this almost kind of cloak, uh, there's this shadow. I'm gonna map in the general shadows, sort of what's called the shadow mass on the figure and on the face. Again, laying that whole side of my pencil down helps me quickly mass in shadows. And we can come in with more of a refined tripod grip later to define things in greater detail. So I'm paying attention to the shapes of the shadows and also the shapes of the light. There's a little patch of light right there, I'm leaving that, right? It's a shadow that comes down here on the chest. 
comes down the stomach. Getting that whole shadow mass in there. And another shadow, other side of the chest over here. The head is casting a shadow down. Getting that whole little cast shadow in there. Mapping in the shadow mass on the arm, the sort of bulb of that joint right here is catching light. There's shadow on this side. Really most of this side of the arm is in shadow. Shadow on this side, light on that side, shadow on this side. Okay, so paying attention to both the shape of the shadows and the shape of the light. You always want to be checking what are you actually seeing, right? What are the shapes that you're seeing? Checking your assumptions. Okay, that bulb of the knee is catching light. Shadows on the left hand side. So you can also start to see that there is a light logic here, right? There's there's light filtering in from this side, lighting up the figure, lighting up these planks along that side, and the shadows are falling towards the left. So you want to maintain that kind of logic throughout. Okay, so I'll do this approach throughout, first getting in the big sort of shadow masses and then um, coming back and into detail. I'm going to continue doing a detailed approach within the figure and, um, and show you kind of how that works and I'll switch out back to a time lapse for finishing up the piece. So now I can even get into my darker pencil too. I'll kind of be switching back between this 2B and the 6B. Um, so this is also going to give you a sense of what these different pencils can do. The 6B can go really dark. So now I can really pay attention to the darkest um, uh, values that I'm seeing within the piece. So parts of this kind of cloak background go very dark or this blanket that kind of looks like a cloak and remember you can use that whole plane of the pencil right um, parts back in here also go very very dark Parts of the hair go very dark. Now as I get into the figure introducing these darks, I'm switching to that tripod grip, which gives me more control. Okay. Parts of the facial features have these very dark shadows. Back to my 2B. I'm just going to be darkening parts of the shadow that I see are darker and introducing a bit more detail. Now again, you're not having to replicate this piece exactly. I mean, this piece is very, a very time intensive, huge work for Charles White. Um, but I do again want to see that you're studying the value and you're getting down the big ideas. Right. 
so we're getting into more of this figure. Popping in these darker shadows that I'm seeing. And defining it a bit more. So you can think of drawing as happening in layers. Um, so you can start by doing that kind of shadow mass layer, getting those general shadows down. Then you can be working on top of that, getting more information down. Starting to go in and put in your darker darks and kind of gradually work your way up uh, the value scale. And we want to use this as an opportunity to learn from this master artist. So this is part of a long tradition of artists studying other artists, making copies of what these other artists have done. So making copies of other artists' drawings and paintings or just would go to different museums and work from looking at a painting or drawing from life and uh, be looking at that and seeing what another artist is doing with their composition, what they're doing with their mark making, with their, their paint quality. Um, so this is part of a whole uh, tradition in art education of learning from master artists. All right, y'all, so now I'm going to switch back to a time lapse as I finish out this piece, and I'll show you kind of the expectation for a finished uh, master copy sketch. Okay, everyone, another thing I want to show you with a kneaded eraser. So if some of your graphite has kind of smeared, say, from your hand resting on the paper, which you want to try to lift your hand if you can, but obviously even I do that. So um, if some of that graphite is smeared, the kneaded eraser is really excellent for going in and taking out that smeared graphite. So again, the kneaded eraser is great for if you have light marks that you want to get rid of, or if you even have a part of your drawing that maybe you just want to lighten up a little bit, you can use your kneaded eraser for that. So you can see it takes away um, those graphite smears really nicely. So um, be sure at the end of your drawing to kind of look at things, see where you can kind of clean things up a little bit. You can go back in with your kneaded eraser or a dust-free eraser too and see where you can kind of clean things up. Okay everyone, so that is the process for doing one of these master copy sketches. I haven't copied the piece exactly or perfectly. I'm not searching for perfect in these assignments, but I want to see that you're investing time. You should be setting aside at least kind of an hour and a half to complete the drawing portion of this assignment, okay? There's always going to be writing portions too. So again, you can have your drawing on half of the page. You can do your writing on the other side, or you can do the writing uh, digitally as well. You could even save this other side for another master copy sketch, combine them together. Um, but I want to see that you're studying the composition, that you're paying attention to what's actually happening in the artwork, that you're capturing the values, that maybe you're even trying to capture some of the texture too. This is going to be a great way 
to learn about things like composition and value um, from artists like Charles White, who were masterful uh, at creating visual works, okay? And it's also going to give you a much deeper appreciation for art as well. Uh, so sometimes you kind of just take art in as, oh, that's beautiful, and then you pass by it. But when you're really drawing it and studying it, you get a sense of how difficult some of these things are that these artists are accomplishing. So it's going to make you think deeper about art as well and develop that art appreciation. Okay, so as always, feel free to reach out with any questions, message me over Canvas, or send me an email.